Good afternoon. afternoon. Welcome as we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new liturgical year. We also are celebrating the baptisms of Rowan Joseph and Cy Joseph. Um, We have an additional collection today, and that is for our food pantry. Last month, our food pantry served 413 households, and groceries were dropped off at 175 households, or 175 households, and that's all due to your generosity and the participation of our volunteers. Um, Also, we continue to collect donations for our giving tree, which uh, results in gift cards to guests of our food pantry for the children 12 and other under. And finally, we have an additional handout for our hymn this week, um, both front and back, and that is at the doorways. We welcome the people praying with us at home. Let us begin as we begin all good things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear parents and godparents, your families have experienced great joy at the birth of your children, and the church shares your happiness. Tonight this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your children and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. Our community rejoices with you. For tonight, the number of those baptized in Christ are increased, and we offer you our support in raising your children in the practice of the faith. Therefore, my sisters and brothers, let us now prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration by listening to God's word, praying for these children and their families, and renewing our own commitment to the Lord and to all of God's people. Elise and Timothy, By what name will your child be known to the Christian community? Rowan. Rowan. (laughs) Rachel and Stephen, by what name will your child be known to the Christian community? Sai. Sai. And what is it that you ask God's church for Rowan and Sai? Baptism. (laughs) You passed that test, all right? In asking for baptism for your children, you are undertaking the responsibility of educating them in the practice of the faith, so that by keeping the commandments of the Lord, they may love God and their neighbor as Christ has taught us. So again, we ask you, or we ask, do you understand the responsibility you are undertaking in the baptism of your children? As godparents, Dylan, Elise, and Rachel, are you ready to help the parents of these children in their responsibility? Yes. Yes. It's a little weak. (laughs) Are we as a Christian community ready to welcome these children and help their parents in their responsibilities? We are. Thank you. My dear children, the Church of God receives you with great joy. And in her name I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior, and then invite your parents and your godparents to do the same. We go forward now to hear God's word and to be strengthened and supported by that word.
We acknowledge now the glory and the greatness that it no, no glory. Let us pray. Grant your faithful people, we pray, O loving God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with, right, <coughs> with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, we may be worthy to possess the, possess the heavenly kingdom. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the first letter. Oops, apologies. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to appear, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that, day, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Tonight we begin the season of Advent <clears throat> with a gospel that is filled with ominous warnings. And Jesus' primary message is vigilance. And the darkness of the gospel is balanced by the hopefulness of Jeremiah's prophecy. The end result will be a leader who rules with justice. And St. Paul's letter to the community that he founded in Thessalonica 
offers a three-part blessing, encouraging them to live righteously as they await <coughs> the Lord's return. May we receive his blessings for ourselves as well. And tonight, <coughs> Elizabeth will offer further thoughts, thoughts on these scriptures. I began praying with these scriptures on November 2nd, a few days before the presidential election. As I pondered the ominous warnings in the gospel, I thought of them as premonitions indicating a dire future for our country and world. People with whom I spoke in the weeks leading up to the election mentioned being fearful, weighed down by a sense of doom. If one individual won, widespread violence was anticipated. If the other one won, a philosophy and view of life foreign to many people's understanding of the gospel would ensue. It seemed like there was no positive way forward. So here we are. The world has not yet come to an end. The earth turns toward the sun every day. We baptized three children on the weekend following the election and will baptize these two babies this weekend. The prayers of the right speak of gratitude that the church is increasing in numbers. There is cause for rejoicing. Our parish continues its weekly commitment to feed the hungry and provide community and spiritual life for whomever walks through our doors. We are keeping on. It is the nature of Advent to provide a vessel in which to hold the tension of the already here and not yet. The eschatological perspective of the end times and the imminence of the incarnation, the presence of our Lord in human time and space. This mystery, this truth, is not a cakewalk, however. Through the evangelist Luke, Jesus warns of disasters. Take them in stride, he says. Stand erect and face the day. Because of the ease of widespread communication, even if we are not personally living in a vulnerable area, we know of the effects of disasters. I was in Ireland the week after Hurricane Katrina destroyed New Orleans. While sitting in a pub and cabin, I watched news coverage of the devastation. The pictures were horrific and led me to believe that our own press had sanitized its coverage. I wept as I noted the uncountable dead bodies strewn across the neighborhood. In addition to the havoc wreaked by nature, there are human-made disasters. For those of us of a certain age, do you remember watching the nightly news and hearing the daily body count from the Vietnam War? Or seeing Newsweek or Times coverage of the slaughters in My Lai, Rhodesia, or the abuse in Abu Ghraib. Today we see, or nearly see, the suffering in Ukraine, Sudan, and Palestine. Jesus lived in a country occupied by an imperial army where capital punishment was brutal in public, with crucified individuals lining the principal roadways. One gospel passage references the slaughter of Jews who dared to stand up to the Roman government. The land where Jesus lived, the entire Mediterranean basin, was and is subject to catastrophic earthquakes that have buried whole cities. All the major cultures of the area 
have a mythic story of a great flood. Drought leads to devastating fires and failed crops. Jesus knew what he was talking about when he painted a picture of destruction. Jesus' world was our world. He advised his followers, Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of daily life. Like them, we ought not be distracted, but attentive. Jesus commanded his followers to raise their heads, pray for strength. As a spiritual director, serving people as they journey with the Lord, I can't tell you how many times I have asked in response to a narrative about a difficult situation or person, how have you prayed about this? And the answer often with a surprised look is, I haven't. Either they cannot bring themselves to pray for someone because of despair or dislike, or because the situation is so enormous that turning it over to God seems too simplistic. However, I believe that God has broad shoulders and is able to carry the weight of our woes. Can we entrust our fear, anxiety, doubt, and whatever else weighs on our hearts to the Lord? Jesus said, be ready to stand before the Son of Man. Posture matters. The ancient church fathers preferred standing during liturgy. It demonstrated the common unity of a redeemed people, people of the resurrection. A fourth century document, Testament of Our Lord, states, Let no one fast or kneel. Let those who carry the burdens of labor refresh themselves a little every Sunday. St. Augustine wrote to Januarius, We pray standing. It is a sign of resurrection. The practice is observed at the altar on all Sundays to indicate that our future occupation is to be no other than the praise of God. Standing also indicates a readiness for action, to be on the move. We have many years before us. We must be attentive and responsive to circumstances as they present themselves. We must be ready and able, holding fast to the truth that we do not face our troubles alone. Nourished by the Eucharist, we walk out these doors to be Christ's heart, hand, and feet in our world. Surprisingly to me, it is the typically chromogenally Jeremiah who offers words of hope. The Lord will fulfill his promise, he says. He will raise up a shoot, new light that will be the source of justice and righteousness. Jerusalem, which means the city of peace, will be called the Lord, our justice, embracing the qualities of this descendant of David, the new king. Waiting for the fulfillment of promises is difficult. Benedictine sister Macrina Weidecker reflected on this in her prayer poem, The Sacrament of Letting Go. She wrote, I worry too much. Autumn trees ask me not to worry. They, like Jesus, suggest trust rather than worry. So often in autumn, I want to go lean my head against a tree and ask what it feels like to lose so much, to be so empty, so detached, and then, simply stand and wait for God's refilling. Once we discover that we already possess enough grace to let go, 
trust begins to form in the center of who we are. Let us pray for one another before emptying is painful. And the body of Christ who we are calls us to support each other in this effort. As he did for the Thessalonians, St. Paul, crossing over centuries, offers us a blessing. He prays that we may abound in love, as he did for the communities he founded. He prays that we may abide in holiness as we await the return of Jesus, which he believed was imminent. And he prays that he will, we will conduct ourselves righteously. May we accept these blessings, recognizing that we are people on the way, a way that is already here and not yet. May we be ready. through the sacramental signs and who in many ways has prepared water, the primary element, to show forth the grace of baptism. God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed the regeneration so that from the mystery of the one and same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham and Sarah to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. 
O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with the blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples to go forth and to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for us the fountain of baptism. <clears throat> May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism <clears throat> from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come upon, <clears throat> excuse me, come down through your Son into the fullness of this bond, so that all who have been baptized with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to him, to life with him who lives and reigns today and forever. Amen. And so, my dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, <clears throat> Your children are about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. And on your part, you must strive to bring them up in the faith so that the divine life may be, present, <coughs> may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in them day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, we ask that you would renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church, the faith in which these children are to be baptized. And so I ask, <clears throat> do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord and brother, who was born of the maid Mary, suffered on <clears throat> death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Creator? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> and so I ask once more, is it still your will that Ryan Joseph and Cy Joseph should receive baptism in the faith of the church we have just professed with you. Roman, yes. uh, Roman I'm sorry. Not <laughs> okay. So we'll take uh, Rowan uh, front and center. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
<clears throat> Rowan Joseph, Cy Joseph, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. See in the white garments that you wear a sign of your Christian dignity, and with your family and friends to help you, we pray that you will bring that dignity unstained into eternal life. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly, so that your children, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as children of the light, and persevering in faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. <clears throat>
invite you now, if you brought an offering, to place it in the basket to the base of the altar platform. If you prefer to give online, you may do so by going to our website and clicking the donate button. Accept, Lord, our offerings chosen from among your many gifts, and let this present expression of our reverence become for us the pledge of eternal redemption. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy God, Almighty and Eternal Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. When first he came among us in the lowliness of human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and opened for us the way to salvation. Now hoping that the salvation promised us will be ours, 
We watch for the day when Christ will come again in majesty and glory. And so with angels and archangels, with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending chorus of praise.
But by our Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power of the Lord, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> You promised us peace before leaving us. We ask you, Lord, to look not on our faults and our human failings, but rather that you would look on our faith, and that one day you would gather us all around your table, where you live and reign today and forever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. And let us bless each other now with the sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord our God, grant that in our journey through this passing world, we may learn from these mysteries to cherish even now the things of heaven and to cling to the treasures that never pass away. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Next Monday, December 9th, we will offer Mass to celebrate the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception at 5 o'clock. Liturgical ministers are encouraged to volunteer on the MSP site. 
Friday, December 6th, there will be an Advent art retreat from 9 to 2.30 in the Parish Hall, Drawing the Light. This is hosted by Chinsia Sara and Carrie Flynn. We welcome donations of non-religious themed children's books for our food pantry guests. There's a box available in the par parking lot office. Family, there'll be a family faith formation event, Giving God Your Best, Yes, Sunday, December 8th from 12.15 to 2.30 p.m. Next weekend, you can sign up to bring gifts to our nursing home and homebound parishioners. Children are welcome to join our Christmas choir to sing at the 4 p.m. Mass. Rehearsals are on December 15th and 22nd following the 11 a.m. Mass. And instrumentalists should see Marie ahead of time so that she has their parts for them. There's a list of reconciliation services for Advent in the bulletin. And most especially, we pray for our confirmation candidates who they are on the cover of this week's bulletin and they will be receiving the sacrament on Tuesday at 6.30 at All Saints Church. Uh, we are now completing the month of November, the month of all souls, so if you brought in photos of your loved ones, please be sure to take them home with you tonight. Um, Thomas Musawi, a person who normally goes to the 8.30, is currently in Zimbabwe visiting his 102-year-old mother, and his birthday is this week, so we wish him a happy birthday, knowing he's watching. anniversaries or significant events. Happy anniversary. Mm -hmm. anyone, anyone else? May you enjoy a blessed week. Let us stand together now as we bless the mothers and the fathers of these infants. <clears throat> the Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of Mary, <clears throat> brings joy to all Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine forth upon their children. May God graciously <clears throat> bless the mothers of Rowan and Sai so that they, as they now give thanks for the gift of their children, they may always remain united with them in thanksgiving in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> and may the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life both in heaven and on earth, bless the fathers <clears throat> of Rowan and Sai, <clears throat> so that together with their mothers they may, by word and example, prove to be the first witnesses and the best teachers of the faith of their children in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit has given us all a new birth into eternal life, abundantly bless the faithful of this community that always and everywhere we may be active members of his people and may be stoked May he bestow his peace on all who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as we go forward,